Now we're going to show you how to do some aluminum rub rail. Some boat owners like to replace their rub rail with original OEM aluminum, and that's what we're going to do in this particular boat's case. Now there are a couple of tricks when you're working with aluminum rub rail that we want to show you. First off is what Taco does is they drill a pre-drilled hole every six inches on the rub rail. So what we want to do is we want to find the halfway point. That's right at six foot. This is a 12 foot section. And we need to move over about three inches as our centering uh, mark on this rub rail. We want to offset a little bit. If we uh, had the hole right here, we're just going to move it over about three inches. And that's what we've done in this particular case. Now, Nick, can you help me find our centering point? Okay, right there. Right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this over, and this is going to be my starting point. Come over here. And we're going to be right here. I'll make a mark on two of my holes. This way I can drill it out. Now we need to drill out our marks, and basically I'm going to be using a bit that's slightly smaller than our number eight oval Phillips screw. and we'll get this one. Now we can put the rub rail back up and screw it in. Now Nick, we're going to need to top these screws off with some 5200. I'll use this to seal my hole. Okay, now we're to our critical bend. And what you want to do on any kind of point bends where we're going to have a chance of twisting the rail around and possibly losing some of the form that's going to hold our insert, take a small piece of insert and install it at the center point of the bend and then work your rail around. And we're going to come back and pull that out. That's just kind of holding a nice shape of everything. It's going to be real important if you get into hard corners at transoms or if you had a sharp pointy bow. When you're butting your aluminum rub rails together, it's real nice and easy. You don't have to do any overlapping or anything. You'll just go right up next to each other. Okay, I'm down to my final length of rail where I need to turn around this back corner. And got a screw that's going to wind up being right in the middle of where we're going to make our bend. So to eliminate any possible uh, future weak points, I'm going to slide this forward and bend between the two screws. And I'm going to mark it where it butts up and then cut this length in a miter box. Now that we've cut the length so we don't have a screw hole right exactly at our bend, I've installed another piece of the insert right at the turn so we can bend this around the corner. We'll put a screw in here to hold it in place. Then we'll go back and pull out that small piece of insert and install the screw underneath it. That should give us a nice smooth corner now. I'm going to cut off any excess here at the corner and then I'll install the factory end cap. I've done with this insert like we did earlier, and I put it out in the sun and let it get warm for a little bit so it's easy to work with and we can manipulate it. I'm going to take the pruning shears and cut this and slide it into the end cap. And we should have us a nice brand new rub rail fully installed. Before we install this 20 foot length of rigid vinyl, I want to let you know that they come coiled in a box. We we'll get into a little bit of a safety issue here. When we cut the cellophane, these strips could pop. So what the best thing to do would be to stand in between it. And cut your straps so you won't get whipped with it. Okay, 
Now we're ready to install this 20 foot length. If you're going to be installing the rigid vinyl on your boat, it's pretty similar to the aluminum in the way that uh, Taco has drilled out every six inches. That's where you mount it. But uh, making turns and bends is a little bit different. What you need to do is you need to excite the molecules with some heat. And what we've got to do, this is a heat gun, but one thing that I want to warn you about is when you're using a heat gun, you don't want to stay in one area for too long. You want to move it back and forth. If you stay in an area too long, you can damage your gel coat, your fiberglass, or your rub rail. We'll go ahead and heat this material up. Nick, I think it's about ready. Want to give me a hand bending this? Now you can do this with a hair dryer too. It's going to take a little longer, but it's going to get the same job done. You want to be patient here. You don't want to force the rigid vinyl around the corner, otherwise you're going to get uh, some white marks. We want to keep it looking real pretty. And guys, when you're using a heat gun, don't put your hand too close because you could burn it. Once it's come around, we're going to go ahead and tack a few screws in on the other side to hold it in place. Okay, now we want to make a splice. I'm going to show you a little trick here. What I've done is I've left two screws out on the first piece. I've set the second piece in and again left two screws out. I've left myself an eighth inch overlap, so I've made this splice an eighth inch longer. I'm then going to pull out both pieces and snap them in place. Now we're going to install the surrounding screws. Now as you can see that gives us a real nice splice. The last thing we need to do on this particular installation is we're going to dress it up with a stainless steel overlap. Okay, like we've done on all our other installations, we've sealed all our screws. There's a few things you need to know here with the stainless steel. Is Number one, we can use the stainless steel just as the stainless steel. You don't have to use it over the rigid vinyl if you want to use it by itself. And a good point with there, a lot of the uh, performance boats and sport boats and such have just the stainless. It's a real sexy little setup. Um, the other thing is when we lay the stainless steel over the rigid vinyl, make sure and go down and look make sure that none of the screws that you're going to screw into are going to screw into any of the screws that held the rigid vinyl on. I've done everything I did with the aluminum as I'm preparing to make my turn as I brought my last screw right up to the turning point. I'm now going to take a rubber mallet, apply some pressure, and tap this stainless steel around the back of the boat. Now, we've got a real nice, clean looking turn there. I'm going to install a screw to lock it in place. After we get all of our screws in, pretty much got this job done. Just want to let you know that it's not a real good idea to have the stainless steel and the rigid vinyl meet at the same seam. You want the two to splice at different points.